Good evening, and we begin at 5 with an update on election results and a new leader for the Beaver State. We want to caution you, the numbers are still changing minute to minute with Multnomah and Clackamas counties about to report in, though the Oregonian is projecting that this evening, Democrat Tina Kotek will win the race for Oregon governor. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. And I'm Laurel Porter. While there are still votes left to count, the Oregonians election data projects Tina Kotek's lead is too big for challenger Christine Drazen to overcome. We have team election coverage tonight for you, tracking results locally and nationally. Let's start with Blair Best in the newsroom on the governor's race. Blair. Laurel, this has been a historically close race with Democrat Tina Kotek and Republican challenger Christine Drazen neck and neck the entire campaign. While it may seem early to see a projected winner given how close this race is and without all the votes in, projections are based on the number of votes counted and how the outstanding ballots are expected to fall. Let's break it down. The state tally shows Kotek ahead by 30,000 votes. Multnomah County, one of Oregon's largest counties, is still has to count 80,000 votes. But according to the Oregonian, 70% of them are expected to go to Kotec, which would add another 30,000 to Kotec's tally. Now we're expecting those numbers to be, to be released at 6 o'clock tonight. Meanwhile, Christine Drazen is not conceding. She instead put out a statement around noon today saying we are grateful to the many thousands of Oregonians who made their voices heard in this historic election. We continue to monitor returns with the expectation that this race will tighten. We hope to release another statement later today. Now this race drew national attention from Democrats over the past few weeks, including a visit from President Joe Biden in a seemingly desperate attempt to keep the state under Democratic leadership. Last night, Tina Kotek addressed supporters, thanking the thousands of people who played a role in her campaign. She also highlights what's at stake in this race and what it will take to get Oregon back on track. This campaign for governor has been absolutely an amazing experience. Thank you. There have been 4,000 volunteers on this campaign for governor. There have been more than 24,000 contributors to this campaign. This is the grassroots campaign for governor in the state of Oregon. Now, Kotek's win just goes to show how difficult it is for a Republican in Oregon to win the race for governor. The last time that happened was in 1986. If these projections stand, Kotek will continue Oregon's streak of progressive leadership. David Laurel. Thank you, Blair. And now to Washington's third congressional district. That's the race between Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez and Republican Joe Kent. Here are the latest numbers we have. And Glusenkamp Perez is still out by about five percentage points over Kent. People across the country are really watching this race closely. If a Democrat takes back this red seat, it could impact which party has control of the House next session. Let's go straight out to Evan Watson, who joins us at the Clark County Elections Office. And Evan, uh, we got to hold our breath because it could be days before we know the winner of this close race. It very much could, Laurel, and currently right now around 5 p.m. It's refresh time because this is the time that Clark County said it would be releasing its updated voting results totals tonight. So we're waiting to see any more that comes in. But as it stands, talking to Clark County election officials earlier today, they expect about 85 to 90,000 ballots still need to be reported. And I did talk to both the Glusicant Perez and the Kent campaigns, and they expect it might take a few days until we know the winner of this race. Now, Clark County election workers spent today verifying and inspecting ballots and voter signatures. Many of these ballots were returned at drop boxes on Election Day or received in the mail yesterday or today, as long as they were postmarked by Election Day. Clark County Auditor Greg Kimsey says that county election workers can get through about 20,000 ballots in one day for results purposes. That means it will likely take at least until the end of this week for all of Clark County's votes to be reported, if not longer. Last night, both Marie Glusenkamp Perez and Kent campaign manager Ozzy Gonzalez said they're going to patiently wait for each day's results update. We're hoping this result stands and the numbers continue to uh, weigh in our favor. Yeah, remain optimistic. Don't be upset. Um, they're going to count the ballots. They're just processing them slow. 
Most of the outstanding ballots in this race are from Clark County. We are waiting any moment now to see what the first Clark County next day update is going to be, how many ballots they got through today for an indication of how many and how long it might take for the rest of this week. Now, compared to 2018 voter turnout, we're about 100,000 votes shy of where we were then. Election officials don't expect us to quite get there, but it shows that there are a lot of votes still left to be counted. David, Laurel. Watching it minute by minute, also watching Lewis, Cowlitz, Skamania, Pacific, and so on. But as you said, Evan, the big numbers really are coming out of Clark, and it might be a while. Thank you, Evan. Let's talk about Oregon Measure 114 now, what is being called one of the strictest gun control measures in this country. The Oregonian this evening projecting it will pass, albeit by what appears to be a pretty slim margin. Let's bring in Mike Benner now. Mike. What are you hearing? What kind of reaction are you getting? Yeah, David, I spoke with Reverend W.J. Mark Knutson, the chair of Lift Every Voice Oregon. And, uh, you know, the nonprofit, you might remember, is the driving force behind Measure 114. And Reverend Knutson tells me that he is feeling humbled tonight, humbled by everybody who worked so hard to get this measure passed and uh, some as young as seven, some as old as 95. Measure 114, of course, calls for stricter gun laws in Oregon. It'll require a police-issued five-year permit and a federal criminal background check on all gun purchases. It'll require safety training and it bans the sale of magazines, holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition, but leaves an exception for people who already own those larger magazines. While Reverend Knutson is thrilled to see these stricter gun laws in Oregon, he says this is not a victory in the traditional sense. Listen. Uh, those who oppose this, we honor their opinions and, and, and really want a dialogue as we move forward with this. But we did want a victory for our children and youth and for all the families in this state who have lost somebody to gun violence, who have been crying out, please, can we do something? It's worth mentioning I did reach out to a number of gun shops across the metro area, even one NRA affiliated group, and nobody was interested in talking on camera. But one shop owner told me over the phone he's afraid that Measure 114 will put him out of business, so he's hoping lawyers will fight back against it. In the meantime, we can tell you that ballot measures typically take effect uh, 30 days after they're approved, but in this case, it could be some time before voters notice a real impact and that is because a lot still needs to be ironed out for instance who will be handling the background checks and the training and what does that exactly look like back to you lots to figure out thank you mike let's take a quick look now at some other local races and measures here are some results the oregonian projecting jessica vega peterson will win the race for multnomah county chair beating sharon myron the oregonian also projecting measure 113 will pass this disqualifies oregon state lawmakers with too many unexcused absences from seeking re-election critics say it gives the majority party too much power in Washington, incumbent Democratic Senator Patty Murray won a sixth term in the Senate, topping challenger Tiffany Smiley. And Oregon Senator Ron Wyden also will continue to serve his state in Congress, winning over Republican Joe Ray Perkins. All right, let's get to those close congressional races. Still too close to call Oregon District 5 right now. You see Republican Lori Chavez Dreamer still out front. Jamie McLeod Skinner trailing there. And in the brand new District 6, Andrea Salinas, the Democrat with about 50% of the vote. Uh, might Mike Erickson, Republican Mike Erickson, a uh, couple percentage points behind there. Has the impact there to affect the national balance of power? And nail biters in both those races. And in Portland, challenger Renee Gonzalez beat incumbent Joanne Hardesty in the race for Portland City Commissioner position three. Hardesty was elected in 2018 and she has conceded. And that's not the only change we'll see when it comes to Portland government. Voters said last night they want to totally overhaul Portland City Council and how we elect city councilors. Tim Gordon joins us and Tim, now the work begins to transform city government. Right, Laurel. And as we heard more than once at a city news conference today, it's going to be a heavy lift to get everything in place over the next two years. Citizens and city staff involved in the transition gathered at the Portland building to go over what charter reform looks like going forward. The big change is coming. We'll scrap the commission form of government and create a city council with 12 members. Three apiece will come from 
of four different districts in the city, and the mayor will become more of an administrator, working with a newly hired city administrator to manage the city, including oversight of city bureaus. It all needs to be in place by the November 24 election, 2024 election, which will be decided by voters using ranked choice voting. To get there, a transition team in my office will implement changes that include working with Multnomah County to set up ranked choice voting and educating Portlanders about that new way of electing officials. Making sure that the city's business can get done and gets done well is our highest priority. Portlanders made it loud and clear. There is no time to wait. Now, there are three different committees that now need to be formed to make all this happen. First up, a 13-person commission made up of community members to determine the boundary lines of the four city districts. That work should be done by September of next year. A lot of different milestones are going to be needed here. We have information on applying for that group, by the way at KGW.com. David? A long way to go with this one. Thank you, Tim, for the update. Let's widen out now and look at other races across the country where the balance of the House and the Senate are still up in the air this hour. And this could be the upset of the midterms in Colorado. Controversial Republican Lauren Boebert trails her Democratic opponent. It's an incredibly close race, although our sister station in Denver reports most of the outstanding votes come from areas that favor the Democrat. Boebert was heavily favored in this race. Interesting one to watch. In the Senate, NBC News projecting the GOP has 49 seats. The Democrats have 48, which means it comes down to Nevada, Georgia, and Arizona. So let's start in the Grand Canyon State. Incumbent Democrat Mark Kelly leading Republican Blake Masters. That race, though, too early to call. In Nevada, incumbent Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto trailing her Republican challenger, but again, too early to call. Elections officials in both states caution it could take days there to tally those votes. What we do know is that Georgia's Senate race, as NBC projects, is heading to a runoff. Incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock topped challenger Herschel Walker by half a point. But since neither candidate reached 50 percent under Georgia law, they go to round two. That's less than a month away on December 6th. Another election there. Meanwhile, President Biden and Democrats are taking a bit of a victory lap here, saying voters sent a, quote, unmistakable message, end quote, about democracy and abortion rights. The American people have spoken and proven once again that democracy is who we are. The states across the country uh, saw record voter turnout. Now, while significant Republican gains have not materialized, the GOP is still favored to take the House by a slim margin. The fate of the Senate with those three races we mentioned is more uncertain.